this is a little tight here. No. Here. Here is my shear. It's a rotary, it's a very stuck rotary shear. Seems like I have to do this every time I use this thing. I got a little bit ahead of myself. The next step is going to be fitting a ring to the inside that'll help make sure that air only comes in here because right now it's actually blowing out from around the outside of the ring because I made this hole too big like a moron um, so I'm gonna put this in um, and barely see a scribe line maybe I don't know um, but that's where I'm gonna make a flange to actually go sit slightly inside the, the squirrel cage So all I'm doing here is just hammering on the on the lip right there, um, which is actually stretching it and making it open up as it stretches. Um, I'm not doing anything fancy. Just kind of working slow. Uh, Just focusing on my scribe line. Stuff I should have done before I got it this far. Um, I need to make a flange across here. Um, and same on the other side. This needs to get trimmed back um, to yeah, make room for the flaps. And then I'm gonna have a, uh, I'll have the top come up across here and go down and then it'll attach across flanges and then I will weld the uh, pipe to that. Uh, well, or actually I might braise that together just because if you can't hear, it's raining quite a bit, uh, and my electronic situation in my shop is kind of sketchy. Am I anywhere close to square on this? No, not really. But I know my shell is not perfect, and it doesn't need to be.
12. Okay, we're gonna start over. be careful doing this you don't want to overwork it on the, the edge there because uh, you'll actually stretch it like we're trying to do over here but you'll actually stretch it and then put a bow in it and that's obnoxious we're actually gonna cutting through this hole so I'm not worried about that there Ugh. I was going to use this guy to, to dish that out um, but I realized it's made from the same piece of pipe and it's not actually going to be able to make a circle big enough for the pipe to fit into. So uh, we are just going to have to do this the old fashioned way. Um, and no, I don't mean a stump, I just mean very carefully. I made this cool clamp to hold my uh, my tool ear together. Um, the it's just made out of sheet metal. It was a piece of scrap I had laying around. I think it's 16 gauge. Looks like 16. Um, I literally just bent, uh, took a strap, bent it over on itself here, and then stuck it in a vise about the width I needed for the nuts. Um, uh, opened it up, folded it out, and then wrapped it up and bent this little thing on the end for it to tighten. And uh, it worked great. Cost me nothing. Hmm, my screw's loose. The uh, screws on these need to be tight or they don't actually conduct. That's going to take a few minutes. This is a cheap, probably a Walmart iron because I don't really buy them anywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, why are we using a soldering iron? Because I bought my 15 amp power supply. 
This is just a little eBay thing. Um, you do need to know how to wire stuff correctly. Um, and I'm going to have to look it up because I don't ever remember. I have to look it up every single time no matter what I do. Um, and I shouldn't have put that screwdriver away either. But, uh, um, yeah, it's two, uh, two outputs. Um, and, uh, yeah, these are like 20, I think it was like $23 delivered or something like that. Um, so they're, they're cheap. Um, and, uh, worst case scenario, they're disposable too. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to try to mount this guy, um, in this orientation because this side is solid and it's got vents here and here and I know technically you want it to be able to air out but I'm more concerned about dust um, settling through the through the grill um, and getting stuff dirty so I'm gonna hang it this way hopefully that'll still be enough uh, be enough ventilation if not they're cheap and I'm burn it up by another one or do something different I should say um, if I had a little bit more budget, I would have built something around a 110-volt uh, motor, but uh, I don't have that budget, so we're not doing it that way. So, and, uh, yeah, so the, the whole reason why I'm uh, getting the soldering iron out is because I am going to use this extension cord that I accidentally set on fire. Um, yes, it was plugged in. It was actually running my table saw. And I do have a nice pair of wire strippers somewhere. But I'm pretty sure they are still packed up somewhere that I can't find. These things are garbage. I would really throw them away except for I end up using them <laughs> a lot because I can't find my good ones. The little cheap one that I've probably had since I was 12 is uh, the only one I can find. Um, but uh, since these are wires that go under a post, um, I just want to hit them with a little bit of solder first uh, so that we're not... Uh, so I don't flatten out the wire uh, and getting an inconsistent uh, uh, clamping force on it. Is it going to work? It's actually blowing back out somewhere around here. I'm not entirely sure why there specifically. Actually, would like to revisit this blower sometime. Ew! Holy crap! It filled all the way up to there. Actually, looks like my fire pot is absurd and heavy enough that it actually might support this.
we are. We're taking this thing back apart again. Look at this atrocity of a bend. Ugh. I'm so ashamed. This is actually slightly over three inches in ID. So that was a waste of time. Ah, let go. You're doing it wrong. Look, it's beautiful. Well, we've got a problem. 